Can you relate to this? So you want your art making to be a spiritual experience, but instead it's total hell. Sometimes you even think your artwork looks pretty good, but then later you realize it just sucks. How are you supposed to keep your passion for art alive when it just doesn't look good? Welcome to The Art Mentor. My name is Sean, and I want to walk you through the trials and tribulations that you are currently experiencing, as well as give you some tips and strategies so that you can feel good, yes, even when your art doesn't look good. So right now, how do you currently view your art when you go ahead and you sit down to draw, when you go ahead and you sit down to get ready? Do you start to feel stressed? Do you start to feel resistance? Does it start to feel like you just can't do it? Like you're just overwhelmed by these emotions. Instead of that, let's flip that script, okay? Let's have that be a moment where when you sit down, that's gonna be your release of emotions. And what I wanna introduce you to is this idea of art being catharsis. And catharsis being a state where you are releasing your emotions instead of just penting it up inside, do something that will actually make you feel fulfilled because at the end of the day, if you have a really sucky day, at least you can see you made some progress on that and that should make you feel really good and fulfilled inside. What, another thing that you can start to do is start to think about, art can be a great way for you to deal with trauma. Like myself personally, I used to do this all the time when I was growing up, like when I dealt with personal trauma and no matter what my circumstances were, no matter how unfavorable they were, art was my time to just get into my own little zone, my own little interior garden that that nobody else could step into. So if you're currently feeling like this, or you don't know how to start this, here's what you do. Go ahead and just make a list of all of the positive qualities and feelings that you get out of your art making. And I want you to go ahead and just post that somewhere so that the next time you're feeling down, you can look at that and be like, oh man, you know what? I do feel really good when I do that. And I do really like the feeling of paint on my brush. That way you're gonna see art as an ally instead of an enemy. Now, before you make art every single time, are you waiting for when you will feel good? Are you waiting for that perfect time when you're like, well, I'm not really in the mood for it, so I'm not gonna sit down and do it. Well, y'all, that's probably the reason why you aren't making art as much as you'd like to or at the level that you want to is because you're dealing with circumstantial happiness from it. You're letting your external state influence your internal state, meaning that you're waiting on life circumstances to present themselves in the most opportune times as if life is just going to bust through your door like Hagrid and be like, Phew. Hey, you're an artist. Like that's not gonna happen y'all. Instead, what you need to do is just realize this, is that you are not ever going to be presented with the perfect set of circumstances, with the perfect influences, with the perfect time y'all. But here's the thing, every single artist that you love and admire, they have the same 24 hours that you do. The difference though is efficiency. The difference though is their habits. The difference though is how are they utilizing their time in order to get the results that they currently have and you comparing yourself versus them when they've been doing it and they've been doing things differently, like really compare and be like, have I been doing that? No, I haven't. Okay, cool. How can I start to shift that? Here's my biggest piece of advice for you on this. Do not let your art be the victim of your circumstances. You will regret that forever as an artist. We're always focused on the end results, aren't we? We're focused on how many pieces we can create and we're focused on to the level that we can create and we're focused on what we need to do. But y'all, here's a key thing that a lot of artists are not really focusing on. It's the reason why you are not getting your art to the level that you want to and you're not happy with it is because you're too focused on that angle. Like honestly, myself, I wanna be really raw and vulnerable with you right now. Like I still feel a little bit of paralyzing fear every single time I bust into a piece, doesn't matter how much I'm getting paid for it or how high that number is or how amazing the opportunity is. Like I still feel a little bit inside. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. So the way that you can think about this is this, think about how you can approach that so that your process is gonna help you feel better about it. You're gonna combat those anxieties by doing little things like for me, and here's what I've kind of developed, is this process where like I go from it just being really messy to success. The big paradigm shift that you'll come to through this is that you will find an extraordinary amount of fulfillment through your process, through just your creation method. That is where you really live. If you are only finding gratification at the end product, that is not sustainable. That's how you're gonna burn out. That's how you're gonna feel miserable. And I promise you this, that's how you're gonna quit too. Now, every single piece that you're doing, I just wanna ask, like, how are you allowing yourself to grow? Are you trying new, new things? 
Are you trying new subject? Are you trying new methods? Are you trying new media? Are you trying something that you saw on YouTube and you're like, hey, let's see how that works? Or are you just doing the same dang thing over and over and over and over and over again? Well, y'all, you know what that creates? That's literally the definition of insanity, isn't it? And I see a lot of artists dissatisfied with their work, but what are they doing? They're using the same style, the same pose, the same coloring methods, the same this, the same that. So instead of doing that, y'all, what I want to encourage you to do is to reach outside of your comfort zone. And I want you to just embrace challenge because if you are inserting new challenges into every single artwork that you do, you are going to level up so much faster. And y'all, here's a big enduring understanding that I want you to come to right now is that if you don't challenge yourself in your art, then your art is going to challenge you. So make sure it is not the latter and it's the former of those two because the last thing you want to do, the way that you're feeling right now, right, is that you're feeling challenged by your artwork. So instead, you start that fight instead of it fighting with you the whole time. Now to do this for yourself, and I'm just thinking about myself, this is something that I've always done every single time that I work with clients and they don't even know about this, right? But what I'm doing here is I'm giving myself a target. I'm like, okay, I wanna do a more expressive face. I wanna create a really big mood. I want colors to be more expressive in this one. I want my anatomy to be on point. I wanna create a this type of character or that type of character or this thing that I've never done before. I'm giving myself little tiny challenges in everything that I do. It doesn't have to be great, big grand colossal ones, but just little tiny challenges to me. And then that way I've got a focal point for how I want to proceed and how I'm going to grow. And then that way, what do you get from that? Now you got a reference point and you're like every single time that comes up, boom, I can do that. Oh, that I've done that before too. That mm, I've done that before too. And you're going to feel good about it. And you're going to feel really motivated to just continue to kill it. Now, the next big question I want to ask you is, why haven't you liked and subscribed? Y'all, I love you so much for watching this content and I love to help you just like this. So make sure that you do and now make sure you do this. Now, how long are you typically making art? How long does it take you to complete your stuff? How long are you working on your art and it doesn't even flip and look good? Are you worried about the fact that other people can do it a lot faster than you? Are you watching pros and you're like, oh God, how can I ever assume that level? How can I ever possibly command that? Well. Here's the thing that I wanna let you know. This is a huge trap. Y'all don't worry about being a speed demon. Don't worry about how much time it's taking you. And also stop worrying about how much time you don't have. Are you one of these people complaining right now that you don't have six, eight, 12 hours? Well, listen, y'all, neither do I. It's a good week for me if I have that in an entire week. So instead, focus on your habits, consistency and your efficiency. And all three of those things are very interconnected. And here's why. Because basically, if you're building habits, like let's just say that you only have 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day is more than 99% of artists are ever going to sit down and they're going to do that. And statistically, by the way, we all waste two hours a day. If you reject that, turn on your screen time and tell me differently. But think about where can you cut a little bit? Like if you play two hours of video games a day, can you not play an hour and a half and still get the same thing out of it? If you're watching TV for three hours a day, which by the way, the average American does it about five to six, can you cut that down? I bet you can, because again, we're wasting a lot of time being mediated nowadays. So think about that. Think about how you can consistently do that. And if you have an off day, you have an off day, but can you go ahead and you stack that into, okay, I couldn't do 20, 30 minutes today. I could do an hour tomorrow. I bet you can do that. In fact, I know you can do that. The only thing holding you back is you, friend. And then from those consistent efforts, and you constantly being plugged into that, guess what? Now you're gonna develop more efficient methods of actually doing it. And then again, too, you don't have to put forth insane amounts of time. If you can, man, I envy you, but I can't. And that's not how I've ever grown myself either, by the way. So another thing that you can start to do is this. Start to dedicate yourself that when you think you're done with an artwork, work for one more hour. Set that timer, let it go, and force yourself to work for just one more hour. I started doing this about five years ago, and boy, have I seen so many improvements from it, and it's really been great. Another thing y'all start to do is start to time yourself. So if you're a digital artist, really easy, get a screen capture software like OBS Studio, that's literally what I use, totally free, and you can go ahead and just time yourself and just see how long it takes you, and then a year, six months later, go ahead and compare the two. Okay, it took me this long to do this, it took me this long to do that. I promise you, you're gonna feel a lot better about it. You're gonna see, oh wow. Like for me, I take a look at some of my best artworks that I did five years ago, and then versus some of my artwork I'm doing right now, I'm like, oh my God, that took me like 25 hours to do. I could do this in 10? 
I feel so much better about it. So start to think about your time, not as something that is a scarce resource to you, but it's rather something that you just have to exploit in order to do as well as possible. Here's the big question, y'all. What if everything that you're doing right now, you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would succeed with it? What if a portal just boom opened up right there, okay? Like Dr. Strange style. And future you from 10 years jumped through and said, listen, buddy, hey, I'm from the future. And I'm gonna tell you right now that what you're doing is gonna produce the best possible results. And you're gonna be everything that you wanna do. And you're gonna be able to do the things that you want. And you're gonna accomplish all your dreams. But all you gotta do, buddy, you just gotta sit down, you gotta sit your butt right there, and you gotta draw right now. And that's where that journey's gonna start. And then they just disappear. What would you do with that information? Like you would probably sit down because you had absolute certainty, but that's not the life we live in, is it y'all? Instead y'all, what we have to do is we have to employ a process that I call blind faith. And this is basically when you have to act as if you know you are going to succeed. Because the number one thing that people don't do and they underestimate greatly is the fact that what you need to do is build your mind and then your mind will build your habits and your habits will build your success and your motivation to continue that success. The problem here is that most people work this in reverse and they go around and they're searching. They're on the safari for motivation. Where is it? Where do I find it? Who is that one? Take a picture. Instead, what you need to do is not look for motivation, but just look for little habits that you need to build and the way that you're thinking about things. And if you think that you're going to succeed, if you approach your art making with that mindset, y'all, you are going to inevitably go towards that direction rather than go to, away from that direction. So here's how you want to do this, y'all. I want you to think about the artists that you really love, the artists that you really admire, and go and check them out. Study them a little bit. Give them a little dossier about them. And I want you to write down what are their habits, what are they doing, what are their mindsets, how do they think about their art. And then I want you to start to adapt to that right now. Like starting today, after this video, don't just think about it, like actually do the thing. And then that way, you are going to inevitably start to make big moves, start to shift your focus into doing those things. This is going to be a huge way for you to start to step into the artist that you were born to be, but you got to take steps towards it and build those habits first. One of the main culprits is you're probably feeling when you're making your artwork and then you're looking back on it later is that you're probably thinking about the fact that, well, you're going to have to monetize it or it may or may not be a job or you've got somebody's influence in your ear telling you, you are not going to make anything with that or that doesn't look good or that doesn't look professional, right? Do you ever experience this? When you are going to sit down and you're going to make art and you're going to be growing yourself as an artist, you are going to have to combat all of these expectations from other people, from society, from what other people are doing. But my friend, I just want to ask you, do you want to be like everybody else or do you want to be extraordinary? The hardest part for you is not that your art sucks. It's that you're comparing yourself to the future. And what you have to do is you have to just go ahead and push off those ideas and those expectations of what you think that you need to do. And instead, just be okay with who you are and who you're growing into. And one thing that you can start to do in order to combat this need for desire is to stop comparing yourself. So one of the things I'm gonna recommend you do is turn on your screen time. Check how much you're actually using your phone, how mediated you're currently feeling, and how much time on that. And another big tip for you on that one, aim to every single week, decrease that by 10%. And that's gonna be game changing for you. Now, currently right now, you don't feel too good about the way your art looks or you're comparing it to somebody else, right? And you're like, wow, they're so good and they're so amazing. How am I ever going to get there? How am I ever going to compete with them? How am I ever going to be at that level? How am I going to show other people that I can actually do this? I'm not saying that y'all need to be toxically positive, like you only see the best qualities in it, but y'all just find the little moments in every single artwork where you see growth, where you see improvement. This is about you not needing to judge yourself and your value based on how it looks in the end. Because if you're doing that, you're setting yourself up for failure. That's a burnout recipe right there. Instead, check your little moments where you're like, oh, look, I did the eye a little bit better there. I did the hair a little bit better here. I like that background a little bit better. I got a little bit better with my brushes. But now here's another thing I encourage you to do too. The whole time you're doing this, also identify, okay, cool. This looks better, but I want it to look a little bit better this way next time. Oh, that anatomy, this is a big improvement, but mm, I wanna go ahead, I wanna make it look a little bit more like that. So notate those kinds of things. So to stop yourself from over comparing yourself and to get into a state of positive dissatisfaction, 
Focus on just yourself. And I want you to compare artwork every three months, every six months, and then every year. And don't do it more than that. Don't put it up against other people online because you don't know their journey. You don't know what they've gone through. And then here's another one, y'all. Have you ever thought about what kind of trauma that person might be dealing with? Where again, art is their cathartic moment and the time that they're putting into it to escape what they're currently dealing with. Because if that's the case, you might not want to deal with that, would you? Can I tell you a major superpower that art enables you to develop? It's crazy. But y'all, we live in this modern era where everything that we do has to yield immediate results. And it's a really hard thing that a lot of artists deal with is that they'll work on a piece maybe for like eight to 10 hours and then they'll look back on it and they'll be like, woof, I don't even understand what I did wrong here. How am I ever gonna compete with this one? How's this ever gonna look good? How am I ever gonna have any value? How am I ever gonna get out of my parents' basement? Is this you by the way? Cause I'm talking to you friend. Y'all, instead of you being hyper-focused on the product at the end result, what you can do is you can create a checklist whenever you're working on something, okay? And this is a really efficient time management thing too, by the way. Don't just look at it at the end as like, I need to finish my artwork. That's a really big ambiguous goal with too many things. Let's chunk that down. So for example, what are you gonna do today? You're gonna do your hair, you're gonna do the eyes, you're gonna do the face, then tomorrow you're gonna do the clothing, you're gonna do the background, you're gonna do weapons and accessories, okay? You see how this works here? It's real simple, but what that does is you creating a checklist gives you quick little dopamine bursts. And then that way, you're gonna have something to actually feel good about. The process of it delaying gratification is actually really amendable and it's really easy to work through if you are giving yourselves little successes along the way. That way you feel good, you feel accomplished and it's sustainable, try it out. So you've gone through this stuff and you're thinking to yourself now, okay, but I still need to learn some tips. I need to learn how to render. I wish that I could create my characters better. I wish that I could make my art scenes better, right? But what do I do, Sean? What do you do, y'all? Go ahead and watch this video right here. I'm gonna give you some solid tips and tricks from people submitted just like you.